Hello there and welcome to The Standpoint. Um, today we are going to talk about women's reproductive rights. Uh -huh. Women's reproductive rights, what to do. I mean, what have they got to say? Do they have control over their body? Their sexual rights as well. It is a program and a half for you, and you don't want to miss it. I have representatives from Mary Stopes here to enlighten us on the Ghanaian woman's reproductive rights. Now, this is a program every woman, every girl needs to watch. Well, let me say thank you to DTP for my clothes. My dress was made for me by... Ophelia Crossland Design, thank you so much. They always sought me out, and I'm so grateful to them. Dora and the team, thank you so much. My wake up, mm -hmm, today I'm going the Afro way. It's by Inshilo. Thank you so much to her for coming back on the program to sort us out. When I tell you the story behind, mm -hmm, we'll tell it another day. Well, my makeup products, ha, officially, once again, welcome Cone Professional Makeup to the Standpoint family. They are our official makeup sponsors now, and we are so grateful to them. Cone Professional Makeup, go get yourself one. As a woman, go buy some for your family, for your wife, for your, for your girlfriend, for your daughter, and you won't regret it. Natural, smooth on the face, very light, little and express, and it lasts a longer. It doesn't kick. And it doesn't make you feel heavy on the face. It is the makeup to look out for. And it is the makeup. Forget about all the others and go for cone professional makeup. Well, my makeup was beautifully put together by Makeup and More. Gloria and the team. We're so grateful to them. We take a break when we come back. The woman's reproductive health and rights. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. If you just joined us today, we are talking about women's sexual reproductive health. It's so important. I'm sure you're wondering what it is. Yes, these women, they are at it again. Don't worry, we'll explain it very soon. And you'll get to know about it. And this specific program is sponsored by Mary Stopes International. And um, we'll find out where they are, the services they provide, and everything about them. We'll find out the misconceptions and all the rumors and the things that people say about them. What is it all about? What are they here to do? What have they been doing? What have they been able to achieve? As the beginning of the month of October, this is the 10th month, three months to the end of the year 2020. Woman, you've got to get it right. Well, the standpoint is also sponsored by Live Strong with Iron. Live strong with iron, women's reproductive health. When we're talking about reproductive health, we talk about your boosting your immune system as well. You know, um, we are talking about getting iron into your system, making sure that the food you eat are rich in iron, making sure that your children are fed with foods and cereals and um, porridge fortified with iron, making sure that your young girls in their reproductive age who have to go through menstruation every month don't become anemic after menstruation. Just feed them right. Iron deficiency is a big problem in Ghana and it's getting worse by the day. We're seeing more people with iron deficiency anemia and... Um, the way to handle it is very, very easy. Just eat our local foods. Kontomri, ademe, beans, agushi, um, cassava leaves, um, boko boko, um, um, fish, meat, red meat, abedru. Some call it um, kwaun susai. And you make sure that after every meal, you make sure you take some fruit rich in vitamin C. When you go to the market, you need spices, look out for the ones fortified with iron. Iron fortified spices. Make sure you look out for flour, you will look out for milk powder, all fortified with iron. And they are the sponsors of the standpoint. But I repeat, this particular program is sponsored by Mary Stopes International. Just because you, woman, your sexual reproductive health matters to them. Let me come to the panel and introduce my 
October guest. They used to say August guest, right? It's, it's today it's October guest, all right? So at my stream left in her beautiful Intama Atari fabric dress is um, Madam Patricia Entribue Siako. She is the Deputy Director of Operations at Marie Stopes International. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you, Auntie Gifty. And next to her is a lady in stripes that I envy her dress. I'm going to lose weight and make sure, you know, I get it you know, sometime soon, is Madam Mary Tay. She's a clinical quality advisor at Marie Stopes International. Good to have you on the standpoint. Good to be here. So how have you been doing? How long has Marie Stopes been in Ghana? Should I go to... Okay, so thank you very much. Patricia. Yeah. So Marie Stopes International Ghana has been in existence for quite some years. In Ghana, we've been here since 2006, so mm -hmm. we are heading towards our 16th or 17th year, actually. Actually, when it was been uh, one of those, I uh, was a reporter from GBC that came to cover it. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, okay. And how has it been this past, Mary, let me come to you. This past 2006 was over 14 years, right? How has it been in your precious? I mean? Well, um, so even though we started in 2006, we started actually uh, providing services in 2006. 17. Okay. Well, we started small with just one clinic in Kukumimli. Yes. And then over the years, we've grown to eight clinics, which is oh, quite you're kidding exciting. Me. So it's, it's been a very successful. Um, no, hold on. Now you have eight, clinic. eight clinics. Yes. Across the country. Spread across the country. Wow. From one clinic to eight clinics. One clinic in Accra to eight clinics in, yes, five regions. As I Which regions? Can you right. take me through? So um, in Greater Accra, we have four clinics. There's one at Kukumimli, yes. just behind the Joy FM. FM yes. Then there's one at Tema Newtown, behind the police station. Okay. There's one in Ashaman at Tulaku. That's quite close to me. <laughs> oh, where okay. I live. <laughs> you should pass by one I of these will, days. I will, I will, I <laughs> will. And then okay. there's one in Tansoman, that's one last stop, just okay. opposite the Las Palmas uh, food joint. Okay. So that's four in Accra, ah, in Greater okay. Accra. There's one in Tamale, mm -hmm. uh, at the Bimbila Lorry Station, very close to the CBG Bank. Okay. There's one in Takradi, in Kwesimi, Team okay. opposite the lorry station. Okay. You like the lorry stations? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the thing is. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. and then there's one in Techiman, okay. on the Techiman to Tamale Road, very close to uh, the famous Trabodom. Trabodom? Yes, very okay. close to the, okay. So, okay. To the Trabodom township. township. Okay. And then we have the one in Santasi Kumasi. Uh -huh. Yes, just uh -huh. across the Santasi uh -huh. Okay, so, so you, would you say that you've traveled, you know, and visited all the facilities, all the clinics? Yes, we have. We actually have. Because if we've been growing from one to eight, definitely it takes a lot to set up a clinic. So yeah. we've all traveled through all the clinics. And aside the clinics, you know, the clinics are static clinics. Right. When I mean static, it's more we set up at a place where people have to assess the services. We also have other services we render in the rural area. Okay. So instead of people walking into our clinics, we would rather go out there to the rural areas to provide the services. Okay, now let me come to Mary. What is Mary Stopes all about? Right, so um, we are an organization that is into sexual reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And so anything and everything about sexual reproductive health, we do, be it service provision, be it training, be it capacity building to provide the services, and be it advocacy, mm -hmm. be it partnership. So okay. anything bordering on sexual reproductive health, mm -hmm. Marie Stokes does. Okay, and let me come to your patient. When we talk about sexual reproductive health, what are we talking about? All right, so sexual and reproductive health is very broad. Mm. Um, the moment people hear sexual and reproductive health, they link it to sex, but right. it's not only sex alone. It's a state of one's emotional well-being, a state of one's physical well-being, and it's a state of one's social well-being. Being able to decide as a woman or a young girl what you want when it comes to your, your sexual and reproductive rights. Right. If I want to have sex, 
I should feel free to say that I want to have sex. If I want to give birth, I should feel free to right. say that I want to deliver a baby. Maybe, yeah. If I have babies, I should also be free to say that I have a baby who is three years old, I have a baby who is eight years old, or maybe let's say three or five years old. So mm. I want to space my birth yeah. for a period of time yeah. to make sure that I become healthy, I'm able to work and support the family, and then my mental state is also at peace for me to have another child at mm. that point in time. Right. You, sh you, should, you should get copies of my book, A Bit of Me, and give it to your girls. I have a, a whole chapter on own your vagina. <laughs> Yeah, own your vagina, woman. You know, I'll get to read it to you. That happens okay. to be the favorite of most of the most ladies. Of yes, yes, yes. You need to own your, your soul. My Such body, a, my rights. Thank you. My yes. body, my, my rights. Right. So I can't. Yes. I, and in their rights, you have the right to decide when, exactly. how, how, where, yes. why, who, and even the time. And even the time. Yes. You know, every you have the rights to decide that, and that is something that unfortunately, we 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 kind of, um, I don't want to say that Ghanaian women don't seem to understand, but our society Thank you. doesn't allow women to understand that you have these rights. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you face when trying to promote this advocate and you know, encourage women to take up their sexual reproductive rights? Okay. Personally, I think Mary wants to Mary, come in. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll answer this with, with, with a story from one of our clinics just two weeks ago. Okay. So I was in the counseling room when I heard you know, some noise, like arguments at the reception area. So I went out and there was this young girl, 18 years, with cuts and bruises all over her body. She had been beaten severely, not, not with a cane, with a belt, I think so. Just because the day uh, before, she had come in to assess a contraceptive service. Unfortunately for her, her cousin saw the receipt and reported her to her mother. And that was the beginning of this girl's wounds. And this is 18 years. 18 years. And who, according who, to the laws of Ghana, 18, she, you're an adult and you have a right to take decisions for yourself. Absolutely. She had every legal right to take the service. They had beaten her, really beaten her. And then her elder brother marched her back to the clinic to come and take off whatever contraceptive she took. I was really sad. In fact, I had to excuse myself and go and shed a tear or two in the washroom and then come back and then compose myself. Even when we decided to help her through it so that um, she can take something she can hide, she had been intimidated so, so much, much by the beating that she, just, she was just like, no, just, just take it off for me. And this is a girl who knew her rights, who knew what she wanted, and who knew how to protect herself. But this is the kind of barrier she faced. And the repercussions are just too many for this girl. I mean, she would walk away and the, the next thing we hear, she has had an unintended pregnancy with all its complications. And if you're not careful, going to drink some concoction for unsafe abortions. Well, let me take a break. Let me say thank you to DTP for my clothes. My dress was made for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs. Makeup products by Con Professional on Makeup. They are here to stay. They are the makeup to go for. My hair, my wake up, my afro, I love it, by Inshilo. And my makeup, my face beat was done by makeup and more. We take a break when we come back. We'll find out why are we still pretending as a nation that our young ones are having sex? Why do we want to believe that our children are angels, with all that is going on around us, why do we refuse to rather educate them and arm them to prevent... Anyway, we'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Again, I say thank you to our supporters. Go got your God as a woman. Your God is very good for you. And if you have to go for it, it has to be go got to your God. Juice time, 100% fruit juices. This time, we are all watching and we all want to be careful. We are getting our Christmas body, you know. 
in shape. I mean, body and everything, you know. Yeah, Christmas, we are going to rock. COVID has stolen too much for us. Because this Christmas, we have to rock, you know. And I wake purified mineral water and royal drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. House of food, everything food. Contact her and she will sort you out big time. Cake technique, cakes and more. She's there for you. Her cupcakes, I keep stressing it. Her cupcakes, mm. Her cupcakes, man, it's, it's just delicious. It's just delicious. So contact them. And thank you to Kodam's Gifts and Stationery. Kodam's Gifts and Stationery, they are at Cow Lane. And everything gifts, everything stationery, they've got it. Every time you walk in there, you find something new. Yep, cleaning services, they take care of everything cleaning from your home to your office to your event. They will really clean it well for you. And hey, just guess what? The standpoint is on six platforms. Have I told you already? Well, just let me remind you. We are on six platforms now. So we are on Joy Prime on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. Repeated on Thursdays at 11 p.m. We are on EBN TV on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Repeated on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. We are on Truth TV, which is on the multi-TV um, platform on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and repeated on Saturdays at 9 a.m. And then, of course, we stream on Facebook and YouTube and our website, www.thestandpoint.com.gh. So we are the program to sponsor and to support. Do you have a group? Do you have an organization that has something women-related that you want to come and share on the program? Please, we just a small bit, just a little, you know, come join. Kit, kit, bipe. Well... Let me come back to the panel and let me go to patience. Why do we, in this 21st century, Ghana, lauded by the world, Ghana that has become so cosmopolitan, Ghana that is leading in so many things, where our young people are, have become part of the global world, internet, wherever, they become savvy, they become sassy, whatever word you, why do we still want to believe that they are not having sex. So and more so because even, even despite this, when we are not talking to them about sex and their sexual reproductive health. I love the statement you made that um, in Ghana, we are trying to portray that these young ones are not having sex. You spoke about they being technically savvy or IT savvy, yes. I mean, the whole dynamics has changed. Let me go to the hard facts. So, the Ghana Demographic Health Survey, when they did a survey, they realized that for 19-year-olds, already about 32% are mothers at age 19. Wait a minute. Yes. 19-year-olds. Already 32% of the Ghanaian population are already mothers. That is just one. It tells us that these young girls are having sex. They are sexually active. And these are the ones who get pregnant and carry the pregnancy through. Thank you. Some of them might not carry the pregnancy through. Mm -hmm. Probably they might want to go and terminate it. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is when they are going to terminate it because of stigma and lack of access or information, they will go and do it the crude way. Yeah. That is one. Now, the same, I think, maternal health survey or the same Ghana demographic health survey continues to say that at age 18, 49% of all girls in Ghana have already had sex. Mm. At age 20, just look at the flow, 73% mm. of our girls have had sex. So what is left, 27%? Are we still trying to sit down and say that these young ones are not having sex? I have seen 14-year-olds who have had sex gotten pregnant. Mm -hmm. I have seen 16-year-olds. I have seen 17. I have seen some of them giving birth and saying, okay, now I've given birth, but I want to protect myself. I don't want to give birth again. I want to continue my education. It is just telling us that these young children are sexually active. Right. Go to the internet. Everything is on the internet. Everything. We had a debate about two or three years ago. And the things these young girls were saying, mm -hmm. television stations that are showing some form of pornographic. pornographic. And I was so shocked. The things, even my kids, I have three kids who are adolescents. I mean, when you start, they're like, oh, we know all this. The cycle is this. Thank you. 
So, Thank you. I had a program where the young ladies about uh, the, the topic was let, uh, let's talk about sex, mum. Oh. And I asked the one of them, did your mum talk to you about? Mm -hmm. Or did yes, it was mum because this is a women. So they said he said no. And I said so. Would you want your mum to talk to you about sex? I said oh, at this age, I will ask my mum. What do you want to know? She's going to tell her mother because she knows everything. When I was an adolescent, I didn't have these access. No. I was someone who used to read, yes. But now the level to which these young 20th century generation kids are just booming with knowledge. The millennials. The millennials, it is great. We are going to have great future leaders. But how are we protecting them? If we still sit back and in our minds, it's like, oh, they are virgins. They are not having sex. Look, they are having sex. So what can we do as a nation? or for us as an organization, to ensure that these young girls and women who are sexually active can be protected so that they can finish their education, would be able to do what, have some good jobs in the future, will be future MPs, and would even be future presidents. Thank you. We shouldn't stay ignorant. We need to take action now. Our cultural beliefs, mm. male dominance, mm -hmm. Look, there's this young girl. You know, in some areas, people, young women might marry early. Yeah. They'll be dating. So I'll marry the girl. So at times, they'll come to the clinic that, look, I'm not ready to get pregnant. I want to have a contraceptive. They come on their own. Right. And trust me, gifty. The man or the brother of the girl or the cousin or whoever, when they see that this girl has come in to protect herself, they will match this girl boot to boots. We have seen cases where it goes to the extremes like, if you don't remove it, this is a knife. I am telling you to remove it. So it's more of the male also domineering over the women. Generally, that's the cultural perception. But now things have changed. We are talking my body, my rights. You should give the woman the freedom to also make a choice. Yeah. I love you, yes. I want to be with you, yes. I wish I could abstain. That would have been the best thing. Yeah. We can't abstain. All right, what next? We are having sex. Let's protect ourselves. And we are not giving these women the right to choose that. I want to protect myself so that when I'm ready, we marry. I want to protect myself because now I'm in school. You are taking care of my school. So please, let me finish my education. Then we can start a family. These are some of the social norms that prevents young women from assessing services. There was a research done by The Telegraph in 2019. Teenage pregnancy rate, 14.7%. It means if you take- um, In this our country, Ghana? Yes. Okay. If we take 10 young girls, we have 1.47. That's about two girls. So 10 girls are standing here. Two of them are pregnant. Sub-Saharan Africa. They are 10%. We are a low and middle income country. The high income countries, 1.5%. Look at the gap. Africa, Ghana, 14.7. Lower middle income country, high impact or high income countries, 1.5. So you realize that this is really an issue. Recently, there was also um, some information from um, the education service in the 2018-2019 academic year. Right. They had almost like 3,800 girls getting pregnant. Oh, wait. Stop it. Yes. I'm not done. Central region. No, no, no. Hold on. Okay. Which year? 2018-2019 academic year. year. Upper primary to SHS. They had almost Not like SHS. Upper primary, primary to, to SHS. 3,800 girls getting pregnant. Another region, from January to May, almighty COVID, we were all staying at home, feeling ourselves. We are not doing anything. We are having sex. We are getting pregnant. We had young adolescent girls getting pregnant. January to May, I think it was around, I don't want to mention the region now, so it's around 8,000 girls. I have statistics available, so if anybody wants to challenge that. And if these are the people who are future leaders, are getting pregnant at this time, what becomes of our nation in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Because these young adolescents are the future of tomorrow. 
we are growing older. These are the young ones. They are going to drop out of school. Some of them are going to have unsafe abortion. Some of them are going to use certain drugs and push it in there, into their vagina to pull it out. Listen, some I'm, will die. Some there won't. are some places, I mean, few, few years ago, in the central region, I'm, I'm from the central okay. region, so mm -hmm. I can, in the central yeah. region, where, and we had a program on it, on the standpoint with mm -hmm. IPAS Ghana, okay. where young girls go and stand up a hill and throw themselves Perhaps down in the name of... Abortion. Yeah. Mary, is it that you, you are not doing the advocacy education well, or, I mean, why are we refusing to... Educate our girls. Let them understand. Let, let our parents, our fathers, our brothers understand that it is important, more important to arm them with information as to their rights so that when they are making decisions, they can make informed decisions. Yeah, Auntie Gifty, we, we, we can only do how much we are, where our capacity will allow. The Ghana Ed Education Service should come on board. We've had opportunities to go and talk to school children. You get there and they tell you, talk to them about just menstruation. Meanwhile, we have had an agenda, talk to them about contraception. Of course, nobody is going to start saying, go and have sex and then use a contraceptive method. We are going to start with abstinence. If you can't abstain, there's something to do. And there's something to do. Mm -hmm. And there's like, just talk about menstruation. You start talking about the menstruation, the children themselves start asking you issues about sex. And then you are limited. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Meanwhile, there's a need. There's a need. And the, some of the teachers will not talk about it. And so if you get an opportunity for somebody to talk about it, why not promote it? And so we sometimes, our hands are tied up. Could it be because um, those who are guilty of making the girls pregnant, you know, I get controversial. <laughs> Those who are, who are making the girls pregnant and are the very ones who have to make the decisions to promote and support young girls' sexual rights. And so they will, not, they will not do it. Because if a girl knows, you know, I've, I've seen girls, I mean, I used to have, you know, some daughters, I don't even know where, they, they'll come to me and tell me, Auntie Gifty, they, they were 16, 17 years. And then me, I told them, that, no, me, I'm wait till, I wait, I want to do this, I want to do that. Now remember there was a girl at a university, 17 years, came to say, Auntie Gifty, I just don't know what to do because my roommate is always bringing her boyfriend there to have sex in the morning and, and I'm lying there, I don't know what to do and it's disturbing me. Well, let me take a break. While you're watching The Standpoint, um, the Standpoint, uh, sponsored by Left Strong with iron, and iron deficiency is a problem in our country, and we need to fight it in every way. And we can fight it with our local foods. Very easy to find, very affordable. Let's eat right. Let's live right. And always live strong with iron. And this particular program is sponsored by Mary Stopes International. And... Um, we are talking about women's sexual reproductive health. And uh, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about it because too many girls are getting it wrong all because of lack of information and knowledge about their rights and the options that are, that are available to them. And so they, they just go and get into trouble. They get you know, intimidated, they get, you know, manipulated without knowing where to turn to. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint, and we are talking about women's sexual reproductive health, um, which is very, very important, and we need to set up as a country if we don't want to lose our girls, if we don't want to lose our future leaders. We know what girls are doing, young girls, women are doing across the world, and what they are doing for even this COVID period. You take um, a survey of the countries that handled covid 19 very well in their country. They were all headed by women. Yeah. All the countries, mm -hmm. from Germany to, I mean, all the countries. Did COVID-19 have any effect on your work, your services provided? Since, I mean, is that what, between, what? March, March to March, May. 
8,000 girls. Yes. And these are the ones, again, I repeat, who carry the pregnancy through. Yes. So COVID had a lot of impact yeah, on, our, on our work. Yeah. Um, two of our clinics in Accra had to close down. That means lack of access to women in those communities where the clinics were operating. Well, luckily, we didn't close now for too long. We, we, we had to strategize, put in all the measures, make sure social distancing was possible. Mm -hmm. And then after two weeks or three weeks, we opened again. Okay. But just within that short span, I mean, we projected that about I mean, more than... 60,000 women would lack access during that short period. Mm -hmm. And that, that's about close to 10,000 unintended pregnancies mm -hmm. happening. I mean, if we look at our um, history and uh, how to call it, historical data and, and our projections, mm -hmm. close to 10,000 pregnancies because of that lack of access. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we put in some measures because, I mean, sexual reproductive health is very, very necessary. And funny enough, during that lockdown period where people couldn't go out and enjoy themselves, yeah. one way they were using to keep themselves Just company was sex. Yes. And so it was a need. We, we, we had to make sure, we had to make sure that people could get the service. And so we, we uh, used our contact centers. We have mm -hmm. a contact center okay. that, uh, you know, taking calls. We have all the social media handles where people can contact us there. For our tech savvy youth, Twitter, yeah. Twitter, Twitter. Twitter. You know, yeah, yeah, we are on WhatsApp, we are on Instagram. Just yeah. search Marie Stokes Ghana, you find us there. And so, as an organization, we also had to, um, uh, we were affected by the lockdown. Mm -hmm. How do we, for the, the clinics are allowed to operate because they were one of the yeah, exemptions. Yeah. But then for the office and then the contact center, how, what do we do? And so, we had to get in extra gadgets. Mm. And then for our contact center operators, they had to set up in their homes so that they can continue reaching clients. In that period, we had the largest number of calls because people couldn't get to the clinics. Mm -hmm. Some actually tried to move to the clinics. They were stopped at barriers. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? I'm going to the clinic. You are not yeah. sick. You don't look sick. Like, yeah. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So they had to call. We have to, to talk to the policemen. They are coming to seek services. Please let them through. And so, yes, COVID really, really, really uh, okay. did quite yeah. a bit of damage. Okay. But we're quick to I mean, spring up on, on, on our feet. So they're right. putting these okay. measures. Yeah. We, we just celebrated the um, Family Health Week. Did, did you have anything? Did you put anything, you know? Um, oh, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. lots of activities. So, like we said initially, we work in all the 16 administrative regions. So, in all the regions of Ghana, we had activities. We would normally want to partner with our, um, our mother organization, like the Ghana Health Service. In mm -hmm. previous years, we have done that. So in all the regions, we are having some radio programs talking okay. about young girls and contraception, right. talking about myths and misconceptions about family planning, educating them, giving them information. And, and sometimes we give them access to free family planning services. Right. This worked well in all the regions. We also had other activities, like she said, we work with the private health organizations as well. We call them the Blue Star Network, okay, and they okay. are across all the regions of Ghana. So we partnered with them, had their best. some of them, we had community there, but some of them, we set up a stand, we engaged the youth in the community, and then we allowed them access to free services during that, especially on the World Contraceptive Day that fell on the 26th right. of September. And we also do a lot of advocacy. So we have, and youth is our heart actually. Right. So we have a youth advisory board. It's made up of young women and men between the ages of, I think the age limit is up to 20 years. And that board also engaged the youth in the entire country. What they did was that we had a lot of social media handles. They had a Twitter chat, one which she decides, which is a partner CSO. And we did that with Marie Stopes Senegal and Marie Stopes Nigeria, as well as Marie Stopes Ghana, talking about young people and contraception. We also had some floats from it. It was interesting to see the car moving down all the way from Tessa Northern to Tema Newtown, where our clinic is. Then they engage the young ones in the communities. There's something special we have in some of our centers, not all the centers. We call them the diva zones. It's like a youth-friendly room. We've really branded the whole place. It's very youth-friendly. So during the engagements in the communities, they will bring these youth to 
the diva zones and we have a focal person who will talk to the youth. They can ask their questions. If they want a service, because it's World Contraceptive Day and we are contributing to ensuring That's that... That's the 26th. 26th okay. of September. So they come there, we engage them, we give them free contraceptives. We give them some materials, reading materials, and we also encourage them to talk to their own peers because we believe that by word of mouth, a lot of information goes out. So that if anybody has any issue with any sexual and productive health care issues, you can bring the person in there. And you'll find a crop of youth-friendly staff. When it comes to confidentiality, we are A1. When it comes to ensuring that that young girl who walks in there would not be stigmatized, we are on top of the game. So those are some of the activities we had. We had them in Ho, we had them in Kumasi, and okay, it was yeah. great. And even though the Family Health Week is over, you're still operating, and people can still reach out to you and access your services as well. Now, Mary, in conclusion, what have you got to say to the young girl watching you who is confused, who is active in sex, um, and is afraid to get pregnant or to get you know, some kind of infection? What have you got to say? All right, so to our young people, I uh, would encourage you to seek information. Seek it from the right sources. If you don't necessarily, like I said, we have a contact center. If you can't walk into any of our clinics because you are shy, you can always speak to us on phone. So get in touch with us on 0800 208585. It's toll free to all networks. You don't pay anything. It's Try and um, seek, seek the right information. Take care of your sexual reproductive health. Stand out and then be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, your sexual reproductive health should, put, should not put a limitation in your future plans. Mm. How many children did you say you have? I have three children. Do you have girls? Two girls. Yeah. How old are they? 16 and 12. I spaced them very well. By you yourself, you look 16. So how can you have a 16 year old? I mean, I'm a woman, you need to take care of yourself. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what have you got to say to parents out there? Okay, so I'm glad you mentioned this because I was even going to mention it if you didn't ask me. So I'll just want to talk to all parents that it's important we acknowledge that we are in the millennium. We are in the 20th century. A lot has changed. During our days, in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, we didn't have access to internet. Our children have so much access to internet. They have so much access to right and wrong information. It is left to us parents, both mother and father, to talk to our children about sex and sexuality. It is left to us to educate them if you mm. indulge in it, this is what happens to you. Exactly. It is left to us to let them make their choice. And we shouldn't just sit and say, oh, my child, oh, they say we should abstain, so that is it. Please educate your children. If it is difficult for you to educate your children, find a way. At times, there are programs on television. Yeah. Then you start. I had a program. I facilitated a program just yesterday. Mm. And the lady said, they were six girls. Any time they had their period, like one girl will have their period, their mother will sit them down. This is menstruation. Cycle is this, this. If you go, not lie down with a man, no. If you go and have sex with a man, you become pregnant. When you become pregnant, you cannot continue your education. You come and stay home with me. So I think that now it is time that we parents take up that responsibility. Let's not leave it to our Sunday school teacher. Let us not leave the responsibility to school teachers. Let us not leave the responsibility to our friends. Let's engage our children, educate them, and give them the right information. One day in future, you see your kids and you'll be happy that you did. So that's what I have and to say. And may the girls and boys and mothers and women watching say, I have learned something. Thank you very much for coming to share. Wish you all the best and Thank you. we'll continue to support you. Thank you. We take a break, I'll be back with a bit of me. Parenting in the 21st century is tough. No doubt about it. 
it's really tough. And those of you who have teenagers, I can only imagine what you're going through, especially around this COVID period. But let me ask you, how would you have it? Your child going out there to do something that he or she is ignorant about and coming home with a problem. Or you arming your child, especially your daughter, with information. And yes, I'm talking about sex and sexuality. You see, <laughs> even grandmothers are on social media now. And yes, I'm a grandma. I became a grandma quite recently, <laughs> you know. And well, I've been a grandma for a long time, but I became a, a grandma again quite recently. Our young ladies are on social media. And there's so much on social media, on the internet. Even our young children, when they take our phones and our tablets, sometimes the places they go to will marvel you. Anything, and they can chance on anything. And they are young, they are growing up. This is a time when children are telling each other that the, having sex is the ish. Have you talked to your child, especially your daughter, about sex and her sexuality? Have you told her, educated her about the options? Because yes, our children, no matter how old they, they, they'll be our babies. But the harsh reality is that they know some of the things you and I don't know. They are having sex. Two years ago, HIV AIDS statistics, the age group who were high when it comes to HIV in Ghana were between 15 and 25. The statistics are scary. Having sex is not just about getting pregnant. But the STIs and the STDs, sexually transmitted infections and sexually transmitted diseases that our children will be confronted with. That's a problem. So we need to talk to them. Yes, we need to encourage them, pray that they abstain from sex, but we need to let them know that if they are having or they have had and want to have it, these are the options. They need to protect themselves. They need to, and my focus is on the girls because you know what? The boys impregnate the girls and the girls stay out of school and then the boys continue to go to school. The girls become tagged and be called born one and school dropouts, but the boys will not be called any names. It's such an unfair world. And that's something we need to tackle too. But for now, in the meantime, dear parent, can you talk to your child about her sex and sexuality life? Her sex life and her sexuality. Can you let her know that she has right to say no I don't want to have sex. She had right to decide who, where, how, why, you know. She has rights. And you'll be amazed that the more information they have, the more they are willing to abstain or to wait for the right time. I remain the woman with super crazy faith in God. I'll keep praying. <laughs> I'll keep praying. I'll keep praying. But thank God he has given us wisdom. Dear parents, Let's apply wisdom and talk to our children about their sex life and their sexuality. Let them understand that they have a right when it comes to their sexual reproductive health. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.